Hello, I'm Bernie Cardi. I'm the gynae oncology nurse specialist. Hi, my name is Diane Howell. I'm one of Bernie's patients and I'll have endometrial cancer, which is ongoing. So my role as a gynae oncology nurse specialist is I see patients at pre-diagnosis, through the diagnosis, through the treatment, and all the way through the cancer pathway. So basically, I feel my role is there as a support, as an advocate for the patient. Basically, in gynaecology, patients can attend sometimes three or sometimes four hospitals. So I'm with a link a specialist nurse to help them wherever they may be within their treatment. Well, I have to say, Bernie's now totally invaluable to me. But back when I first met Bernie in December 17, um, it was an emergency situation, emergency hysterectomy, and I got summoned by Mr. Wabanelli just before Christmas to let me know it had been endometrial cancer. And the lovely Bernie was sitting in the room, and I was thinking, why is Bernie in here? Do you know what I mean? I'd never met her before at this point because it had all been a bit of a rush. Um, and I remember thinking at the time, why would I need a dedicated gynae specialist nurse? I'm all fixed, or so I thought. Couldn't have been more wrong, you know, in that assumption, basically. Um, and from that first meeting to now, obviously in 2024, I can't tell you how invaluable that relationship's been. It's been a torrid journey. It's been scary at times. It's been where you think you're cured a couple of times and then you find you're not. And to now be in a position where it's not incurable, I probably need a Bernie even more than ever before. And like Bernie mentioned, she is that link, that linchpin, if you like, between all my different consultants, hospitals, of which I like to do the whole region. <laughs> you know, I don't favour one hospital, I cover them all. Um, and sometimes, I like to think I'm able to stand up for myself, but there's sometimes when you're just overwhelmed by it all. And like I say, she may be small, but she is deadly. Um, and she has impact in lots of different ways. So whether it's just checking how I'm feeling, because when I've like, seen her face to face, I might have been a little low and she's picked up on that, or she's just given me a call to check in, or whether it's because I've had a bit of a scare or, or having an urgent course of treatment. Um, it's like really unique and I assumed incorrectly, as you do, that everybody had a Bernie and it's only been since I've been going to living with uncertainty group at Maggie's that I found out that's not the case or that people don't know there's such a thing as a Bernie, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and people are quite stunned and shocked when I give my experiences of how valuable this has been to me throughout this journey. People are like, well, where do I get a Bernie? How do I find a Bernie? And I'm like, oh, well, ask somebody, do you know what I mean? So it's really made a huge difference, I think, to me personally, and to my sister. My sister's the closest person to me. And again, Bernie and Mr. Ravenelli both bought into that in importance of that relationship that my sister understands everything that's going on because we're like polar opposites. She's the professional warrior, I'm too lazy to worry. And so it's nice to know that professionals will take that time to understand the importance of your family relationships. And again, when I speak to people in the groups and people I now know throughout different hospitals with cancer, some of them don't take a person in with them and I think it's a huge mistake, you know? Like Dawn has equally as good a relationship with Bernie as I do and Dawn could ring Bernie in a heartbeat if I was in a desperate state. And I like that fact. I like that she's accessible. So I've changed like hospitals and groups and consultants throughout this process. Um, but Bernie is my constant. Do you know what I mean? That I can ring and just say, I'm feeling really frustrated. I can't get an appointment or I can't get a scan or this hasn't happened. And I'm worried Bernie because time is ticking on and what if these tumours are getting massive and this and the other. And I know that she'll come back to me with an answer in a timely fashion. Oh, a huge difference, honestly, because like I say, Dawn is a warrior by nature. And so I might play down my situation to Dawn sometimes. And Bernie will also word things in a Dawn friendly fashion, if you like, you know, rather than scaring the life out of her and making her worry unnecessarily, you know. But also, Bernie is equally very honest and direct, you know, and I know she won't soft soap me about a situation, you know. We may not be thrilled with the results of a particular scan, like we had a bit of a scare in October, wasn't it, last year? Our birthdays. Yes, just before the birthdays, because it's just not very good timing. 
um, where the tumours had spread from the liver to the spleen and I ended up having to be rushed into hospital at Sunderland which Bernie again got me fast tracked in to get sorted out because the pain was just intense and I'd never experienced such pain in the whole time I've been poorly. Um, so again that just helped me to deal with a crisis spot you know to get to this point um, and like I say if I didn't have access to a Bernie I'm not sure that would be the case. I'd like to think it would, but I'm just not sure. I think they've got to be outstanding listeners. I think they've got to be able to read your body language as well as what you're saying and what you're not saying. I think the experience is invaluable. You know, Bernie's obviously been doing this a long time. Um, and again, that gives you that reassurance that, you know, perhaps you're not in free fall like you might think when I walk through the door at Bernie's office. <laughs> um, by the time I leave, I often, but I'll probably say it all the time, the feeling reassured. I think there's only one time when I was still a bit obsessed with the result that yeah. thinking something else was going on. Um, but I think the other things that a good clinical nurse needs to have, those skill sets, just to be able to, like I say, read the person. And hospitals in general, as I visit them all, are very good at treating the illness but not so good at treating the patient sometimes, you know, because obviously they've got priorities and they've got hundreds of patients. I've only got one of me. And so I need to be able to get answers to my crazy thoughts. And that's normally via Bernie, you know, because I might not be able to necessarily reach me consultant straight away, might not be available and everything. But I know that if I leave a message for Bernie, I will hear back. I would say it's like a bespoke service almost I really would because to me just through people that I speak to so I mix with the Northern Cancer Voices Maggie's lots of different charities now I'm shocked at how other people don't have what I have and I feel a little bit guilty sometimes I'm not gonna lie you know but I'm always like advocating that they need to get in touch with one because it makes such a difference to your journey